What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Super Flight, where we're breaking down the ACS piece by piece every single day. I'm Garrett, a flight instructor, and today begins task B. So we're starting out with the first section of task B, which is certificate location and expiration dates, or PAIBK1A. And if you look at the format, the subsections in task B have one subsection with sub subsections that are labeled a b c and so on and so forth so this is a there's not a ton that goes into this first subsection there's a very helpful acronym on here that you definitely have to know for your check ride so make sure that this is burnt into your head if it's not already and that is arrow here you should really be doing this before every single flight and if you're not thinking about these things and checking these things before every single flight, your flight school and your flight instructor is doing you a disservice. You need to make sure that the items in this acronym are followed or else you're technically breaking the rules. All right, so we've got the information laid out twice here, one for the actual acronym and one where you can find the information in the FARS. So the A in arrow is airworthiness. And this is referring to your airworthiness certificate. So every plane in civil aviation is gonna need an airworthiness certificate. And it's essentially a certificate stating that the plane is airworthy. However, it's invalid if your plane is not airworthy. As for the list of things that makes your plane unairworthy, it's too extensive for <laughs> It's too extensive for one video to cover, but as we go through the ACS, we're going to be talking about tons of different things that make your plane unairworthy. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for those videos. So for airworthiness, what you need to know for your check ride is that there's an airworthiness certificate that every plane needs to have and that it never expires as long as you comply with federal aviation regulations and keep the plane airworthy. The airworthiness certificate is valid. That's essentially what 21-181 is laying out, that it never expires as long as you keep the plane airworthy. The next regulation for airworthiness worth noting is 91-203 Alpha 1 and Bravo. And this regulation essentially states that the airworthiness certificate has to be visible to all passengers that enter the plane. You can't have the airworthiness certificate just stuffed in the baggage compartment. It has to be somewhere that any passenger gets in, they're gonna be able to see it. All right, next in the acronym is R, which is gonna be first registration. Every plane that needs an airworthiness certificate also needs a registration certificate. This is the same concept as your car needing a registration certificate. And the regulation for registration is the same, 91203, but alpha two. This just says that essentially you have to have that registration in the plane as well. And the rules for registration have changed multiple times. It used to be three years before that. I'm not sure what it was, but at the time of the making of this video, registration certificates last seven years. The next letter in our acronym is another R, the radio station operating license or operating permit. I've heard it called both. Now, this is only needed if you're flying outside of the US. So we're kind of just gonna glaze past this because we're focusing on what you need to pass your private pilot check ride and that most likely does not involve flying out of the US. If it does, for the one out of a million of you, I'm sorry. Some people even leave this R out of their aero acronym because it only applies to those who are flying outside of the country, not to their own student pilots. But I figured I'd throw it in so you at least know about it. The next letter in aero is our O, which stands for Operating Handbook also known as an owner's manual, also known as an airplane flight manual. They're all synonymous for essentially the same thing. It's a manual categorically laid out into different sections about the plane. And again, there's a couple regulations that go with this. First, we've got 21.5. You don't necessarily need to memorize this one, but again, just to know of its existence, it states what is needed to be laid out inside of an airplane flight manual. The next one, 91.9, is similar. It's talking about the markings and placard information that has to be contained within the airplane flight manual. And if you're gonna have an operating handbook instead of an airplane flight manual, it has to follow the specifications of the flight manual laid out in these regulations. 
as long as it does, either one is fine and both functionally serve the same purpose. What you need to know for your check ride is that there is an operating handbook for your plane. It has to be inside the plane anytime you're flying it and it's information about the plane categorically laid out for you. All right, and the last letter in our acronym arrow we've got is W, which stands for weight and balance. And this is referring to the weight and balance information found inside your pilot operating handbook or POH as it's called. Essentially, every piece of equipment that goes into your plane and stays in the plane and is part of the plane's weight has to be included in the plane's weight and balance information in the POH. When you have your plane sitting there and you take out its usable fuel and its usable oil and you have just the plane and its components, equipment, seats, all the things that stay in the plane, that's called your plane's basic empty weight. And a change of more than just one pound of this basic empty weight constitutes an entirely new set of weight and balance information in your pilot operating handbook. FAR 232100, previously a different FAR. Again, these FARs change every year, guys, so you wanna keep an updated FAR aim with you at all times to make sure you're referencing the proper information. And the regulation to go with RW is FAR 232100. Now, if you've listened to my previous advice and you downloaded the FAR aim on the App Store and you search loading or weight and balance, you'll notice there are a lot of regulations that cover loading and weight and balance and most of them say very short things about it and cover a lot of other information i'm going to give you one to be able to reference but just know that this isn't really something where you're referencing very much you just want to know the information about weight and balance which is that your pilot operating handbook should have an official weight and balance of your plane inside of it and both need to be inside your plane anytime you're going to go fly and that it's your responsibility as pilot in command to make sure that the plane is loaded up safely and properly and that's before every single flight but just to give you a regulation we've got 23 2100 which essentially says exactly what i just said and just as a bonus far 23 2620 states that the airplane flight manual has to have the loading information in it but again, guys, this is not a point in the check ride where the DP is gonna be asking you for specific regulations, most likely. What they wanna make sure you understand is the importance of weight and balance and why it matters and why you should have it with you in the plane anytime you're gonna go fly and why you should be calculating it anytime you're changing the weight in the plane. Oftentimes, questions in the check ride are scenario-based, so your check ride DPE might ask you a situation based on being able to fly a certain distance with a certain amount of fuel based on how much weight they want loaded in the back or some variation of that scenario. For private, it'll be a little less intense than that. For commercial, a little more intense. So just a little review for our acronym. We've got A, airworthiness, which is our airworthiness certificate. It's gotta be visible to all passengers and every plane's gotta have it. R, we've got a registration certificate. Again, every plane's gotta have it. It expires every seven years. Unlike the airworthiness, which never expires as long as we keep the plane airworthy, remember. Next, we've got our radio station operating license, which we don't need unless we want to go out of the country. Next, we got our pilot operating handbook or airplane flight manual, which is just information about our plane that we have to make sure is in our plane every time we go fly. And last, we have our official weight and balance information, which should be located within our POH or AFM and we should be calculating it every time we go fly and every time we change the weight within our plane. And that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it or it helped you out a little bit, please like and subscribe as it helps the channel grow a lot. Doing so shows YouTube that more student pilots should see this and they will spread the videos out more. But anyways, guys, I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.